See if I can turn this on. There you go. My wife, Pam, she said to say hi to you. Uh, um, I told her how wonderful you all were last night, and, and my granddaughters are at my house, and uh, so I told them how wonderful you all were last night when I got home, and uh, uh, they just wanted me to tell you that they send you their love. I'm going to be talking this morning, I, uh, the title name is It's Not About Me. And uh, we live in a world where everything is kind of focused on us. And we kind of, to be honest, we kind of like that. That cause it's all about me. And, and then uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be talking about worshiping God. Uh, we talked about how great God was last night. We're talking about, it's not about me this morning. And if it's not about me, then it ought to be about God. And so I want to talk a little bit this afternoon about how we ought to worship God. And, and uh, I'm going to challenge you today. Now, I need my beepers. Are, are you all ready? Uh, yeah? Okay, so the first beep is going to be at... Ten, ten, okay. and the second beep is at ten twenty. We got that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we got the our uh, 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 paper towel, ladies. Okay, yeah, you're gonna be doing that. That's good. And so if uh, if I'm going by and I'm uh, standing in front of you and I happen to kind of spray you with some saliva. Uh, you just raise your hand and they'll be coming over. Now remember, it's not their job to wipe it off your face or wherever it hits you. It's their job just to give the paper towel. But ladies, when you do that, you have to do it with a smile because you're happy to serve, right? So uh, don't go, here's the towel. Just do it nicely and, and be nice to them because they're wonderful and and uh, I appreciate them very much. Let me ask you a question. How many of you here have a cell phone? How many of you here have a cell phone that's a smartphone? How many of you here have a flip phone? Yeah, 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 yeah. We just bought my dad a flip phone uh, with a speaker phone on it. Yeah, and big buttons. And so he, he really likes that. How many of you who, who are here that has a cell phone that's a smartphone? It's over two years old. How many, raise your hands real high, if it's newer than two years old? When a phone is two years old, it's outdated, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, I, I just got a thing from my phone company said that I can trade mine in on a new phone. It says it's 865 days old now, and I can trade it in, and they're going to give me $32 for it. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to trade it in. I think I'm going to keep it until it doesn't work anymore, until it has become a dumb smartphone. Because when it becomes a dumb smartphone, then we're going to be able to uh, use each other really good because that's kind of where I live my life, just in the dumb area. Um, but we always want the newest. We always want the best. And, and they advertise their phones and their computers by how fast they work and, and everything. And, and uh, uh, we always want the, the latest thing so we can say, oh, I've got everything. Uh, let me ask another question. How many of you have ever been on a mission trip? Race real high, real high. Mission trip, mission trip. Mission trip, okay. Uh, how many of you have ever went on a mission trip to an area that was very, very, very poor? Let me tell you something. If you are a young person, let me challenge you to go on any mission trip. But let me challenge you to look to go on a mission trip where the people there have next to nothing. Because we sometimes think that we don't have very much. And we have so much. But we, we, we get spoiled. And we start thinking that we deserve these things. 
When I was about 10 years old, uh, I, I decided I was going to run away from home because my dad and mom didn't give me uh, the newest thing out and I thought they were very, very mean and they were mistreating me and I told them, I'm going to run away from home. And my mom, uh, she's like, oh, don't run away from home, honey, we love you. And my dad said, don't forget to shut the door on the way out. And I said, well, I just have to get a few things. So I was going in and, and I had some stuff ready. He goes, what are you doing with that? And I said, well, this is for my trip. He goes, I bought you that. That's not yours. <laughs> You're going to run away from home. You leave that here. And, and I said, well, I'm just going to take my pillow. He said, that's my pillow. I bought you that pillow. I said, if I'm going to run away from home, I need a pillow. And he said, well, no, no. He said, you go ahead and run away from home, but the pillow stays. I tell you what, I'll let you take your shoes. I realized at that time I had not bought anything. I'm 10 years old, 9, 10 years old. I didn't have any money. Everything I had came from my mom and dad. And most of the stuff, my dad was going to make sure stayed at the house. So I, I took off. And, and it was about 9 o'clock at night. And that was poor planning. If you're ever going to run away from home, do it during the day. Don't do it at night. <laughs> But I'd already said I was leaving, so I said, I'm leaving, and, and I go, and, and I wanted to get one of those sticks and tie a handkerchief on, like, you know, the hobos. I just thought that would look cool, but we didn't have any, so I couldn't even do that. I just got a stick, and it was going to be my snake stick. So when I go out, and in our backyard, we lived out in the country, in our backyard, there was a big old uh, uh, ditch. And I thought, well, that's where I'll stay tonight. And then tomorrow morning, I'll get up real early and start my hike into the world where I, I knew good things would happen. The only problem was that is when I got in my ditch out there, it was uh, uh, kind of cool and I didn't like that very much. And I thought, wow, just, just get in here, just lay down, go to sleep. And as I'm going to sleep, I start hearing noises. There's animals out at night. And from the ditch, I could look across our little road to the fields back there where the noise was coming from and there was eyes looking at me and these weren't just regular eyes these things were like that big <laughs> and I don't know how many of you have ever ran away from home and slept you did did you slip it, sleep in the ditch just ran well, I, I slept in the ditch at night, and, and one of the things you find out, you may know this, that when you're out there and you see eyes this big, and they're looking back at you, you know pretty much what they are. A bear or a lion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a hypothetical bear, because I don't think lions live around when you grew up at. They could have escaped from a circus. You don't know. <laughs> or a zoo. We didn't have any zoos either. Oh, but you don't know. It could have been a gorilla. It could have been. They were big. And you can tell at night when you're looking over and seeing these giant eyes looking at you, you can tell whether the thing that has those eyes are hungry or not. You can just tell. And it was hungry. And it just kept looking. And I thought, it's going to eat me. And I thought, I need to go back in the house, spend the night in the house, and then leave in the morning when it's light out and there's not hungry eyes getting ready to eat you. So I went back to the house. Now, my dad, he locked the door. <laughs> so I'm pounding on the door. Let me in! Let me in! And my mama, you can hear her in there. My dad's name is John too. John, let him in! My dad said, no, he ran away from home. I'm not getting out of bed. And I said, dad, let me in! There's something out here going to eat me! He said, you ran away from home. You're not here anymore. And I said, I'm on the front porch. Let me in. And I'm beating on the door and I hear my mom, let him in. Something's going to eat him. Dad, nothing's going to eat him out there. He's staying out there for the night. And, and this goes on for like 10 or 15 minutes. And I'm sure whatever it is is going to cross the road and eat me. But finally, my mama, she's crying now. And my dad says, fine, you get up and let him in. So she gets up and she lets me know, well, I give her a big hug, I love you, Mom, I'll never run away from home again. 
And she said, okay, just come on in and get in bed. My dad said, you get up to your own bed. You're not sleeping with us, kid. And so that's what I did. And I did not get eaten. And that was a good thing because now I can tell you the story. If I'd got eaten, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that story. But it, it was all because I thought that they needed to give me something else that I didn't have. We always thinking about us and we're not thinking about other people. We even think other people ought to be serving us. And so I want to talk about three types of living today. I want to talk about self-centered living, which is what we do a lot. How many of you in here are selfish? Oh, yeah, I thought you all were liars, but now you're starting to tell the truth. We, we are a little selfish, aren't we? We, we want certain things. We expect certain things. Uh, uh, I, I remember my mom and dad. It was school, going back to school time, and you know how you go out right before school starts and you buy uh, school clothes and stuff? Um, they went out and they spent uh, about six dollars on a pair of tennis shoes for me to go to they wanted me to wear a six dollar pair of tennis shoes to school with my friends and you say well that was so long ago did they even have tennis shoes yes they did and and six dollars was cheap even back then and i thought i can't wear those to school and everybody see that it, it was just horrible I wanted a pair of Converse because that was a big name at the time. Right. Yeah. I said, let me get those. No, these are, they didn't even have brand names. I think they had tape over something. I, it was horrible. <laughs> but I, I just like, I can't be seen in this. And that's how we're always thinking about us and, and, and what we want. And we think about our troubles and everything. And so there's self-centered living and then there's a, a others-centered living. That's where we're, we think about other people even before we think about ourselves, And Jesus is going to model that for us, and we'll look at that. And then the third one, and this is where it's going to be fitting into this afternoon, is, is God-centered living. Now, can I, uh, um, uh, who is going to read John 12, 1 through 8? Was that you, Charles? Yes. Can I get you to do that? Yes, sir. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 12, 1 through 8. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, they made him a supper, and Mary served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and the money box and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Now the first one is I want us to look at is Judas. Judas is this self-centered guy he, he he one he's he has his money box and, and he's the one who who has it he's one of the apostles and and so as he has the money box and they're going around uh it says that he was a thief that means he would go in the money box and he would take money out there for him now that that's who he was so here you have judas who who as we go uh mary comes in and she has this this perfume uh, uh type things and, and it, it was a Expensive. When I was in the Marine Corps, I was over in France. And while I was in France, I went out to this place because I, I wanted to buy my wife this perfume. It was called Joy. It was the most expensive perfume in the whole world. I think at that time, it's like one-eighth of an ounce was like $100. Yeah. And it came, yeah, yes. And it came in this beautiful dark blue bottle with a red cap on it. 
It's called Joy Perfume. It was made over there. So I'm over in Toulon, France, and I'm walking around to these different shops looking for Joy Perfume. And I finally find it. And I said, I want to buy a, a, a bottle of Joy Perfume. And I just figured there's one size. No, there's different size bottles. Like someone's going to have a million dollars. Uh, this thing was this big, and it was over a hundred dollars. And, and and so I said, uh, uh, I'm a joy perfume. And here's the thing about the French: these folks over in France, they don't even have a common courtesy to speak English. <laughs> so I'm in France, and I say joy perfume, and they said, I said perfume, perfume, and. They said, Perfume, I said, joy. And he said something else. I didn't know what it was. It was in English. And, and I'm like, come on. You ought to speak English. I speak English. And so he goes on. Well, I find out there's different types. There's eau de joy. There's a perfume. There's a, a, a watered down version. And, and there was a guy in there helping me. I said, no, the, the expensive type. And, and so I ended up buying it. And, and I brought it home for Pam. And and I was so excited because she, she's going to be able to say from now on, she had the most expensive perfume in the world. That's kind of neat, don't you think? Oh, yes, this is the most expensive perfume. It didn't impress her much. Uh, Shania Twain would have said. And, and so uh, I gave it to her, and when I got home, I said, here, I want you to have this. And she goes, oh, that is strong. And I said, yeah, I know. It's the best there is. And she said, I, I don't think I can wear this, honey. Oh, no, you're going to wear it. <laughs> you're going to wear it, and I'm going to tell everybody that it's the most expensive perfume in the world. Because right. I bought this for you. Yes. She did like the bottle. <laughs> so she didn't like the perfume, and she said, why don't we give it to your mom? And I said, okay. So I, then I acted like I bought it from my mom. I know that's not nice, but I did. I said, mom, I got you this perfume. It's the most expensive perfume in the world. And I gave it to her. She goes, whoo, that is strong. I said, yeah, I know. And she goes, I, I, I don't think I can wear that. I ended up giving it to my, my daughter, who's like maybe nine years old, going, I got the most expensive perfume in the world. And, and it didn't impress anybody. I wasted $100 for this perfume. And you know what? Now they don't even have the bottle anymore. The bottle's gone. I don't know what is wrong with you ladies. You should keep things like that forever. And then every time you walk by somebody, you can say, oh, my husband got this for me. It was the most expensive perfume in the world. We couldn't smell it, or we couldn't stand the smell of it, but wasn't that nice of him? And, and so, you know, it, I, I wanted to get that. Now, that Joy perfume, that was cheap compared to this. This stuff cost, uh, different people say different things, but maybe in today's world, 300 days worth of work. So maybe $20,000, $50,000. And so Mary has it, and she's going to break it open and put it on Jesus. And Judas immediately starts thinking about the money. Now, if he would have taken that perfume and sold it, let's say he sold it for $50,000. What would you spend $50,000 on? If you had $50,000... If you had $50,000, what would you spend it on? A new car? I could spend $50,000 on a car. I would get a truck if I had $50,000. I would get a, a nice truck. I'd get a, the new Ford Rangers are coming out. I'd get that, and that thing would be topped out with everything, and, and, and I'd have a nice stereo in it. That's what I would do, maybe. Uh, what would you, if you had $50,000, what would you get? Um... Fifty thousand. Yeah. Five fifty thousand. I'd probably buy some, like the new Xbox that comes out. I don't know. Or like the PS Five. It, it would be out. like gold plated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fifty thousand. What would you get? New car. Car? Yeah, yeah. Nice car, right? Yeah. Uh, you want one? You don't have this problem. See, when when I was sixteen. I still look bad. I never look good. So, so when you when you're not too good looking, you have to have a good car. It just it, you have to have it. 
and, and so I had a Mustang that was really cool. It was a 67 Mustang. It was nice. I drove it. Whenever I drove it, the girls would go, oh. and, and I had a Craig Power Play. I know that doesn't mean anything to you, but then it was talking about, it was like the big Xboxes, except it was music, and you put it in, put your 8-track in, and, bah, bah, and everyone in the world would hear, hey, hey, we got, we got wet face. Hey, wet, wet, wet. You go, go. <laughs> Did you smile? Yeah, I did. Yeah, good, okay, good. Uh, so, so you have all of this, and, and the, the music's blaring out, and there it is, and, and everyone's looking, and you look good. There are folks, who, girls out there, that, I, I'd give up and live just right in the car, and that's why you get the car. So that's what you do. You pick it out, and, and you have that. So you have all this money. You can think of a million things to give with it. And so Judas is thinking, $50,000, if I had that right now, I'd be able to give whatever I wanted. He could pilfer from the box any time. He's thinking about himself. Now, when we think about ourselves, we like to rationalize it and try to make it think we're more noble. So we go, well, you know what? If you'd have sold that, we could have took that money. And we could have fed the poor. That makes you sound good, doesn't it? You're thinking about someone else. But that's not where his motives were. Sometimes we act like we're thinking about God too. But we're thinking more about ourselves than we are God. What I want, what I want to do. We ought not be so self-centered. If you ever go on a mission trip and you're at a place where young people have nothing, nothing. And you're there and you see them. When you come back, you begin to look at things differently. I hope that you all get a chance to do that. And then uh, if you turn over to John chapter 13, uh, uh, can I get you to read uh, uh, verses, uh, I think I said one through 17. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to his Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Okay, hang on one second there. Now look, Jesus, he, he knows he's going to die, right? He, he, he knows he came from God. He knows he's going to God. He knows his time has come. This is right before he's going to die. Of all the things that he's going to do, of all the things that he's going to talk about, of all those things, I want you to look at what Jesus did and then look at why he did it. Go ahead. Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Jesus, he's thinking of others. He knows he's going to die. He came down for this purpose to die for me and you. There he is. He's at the 
supper. He, he takes off his, his garment, he puts a towel on, and he washes his apostles. He was thinking about it. And, and what does he tell the apostles after he's done washing their feet? He said that they are to do what? Wash one another's feet. He's talking about serving. He's talking about how we live. We are so busy thinking about ourselves. And, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to challenge you this, this morning. We whine so much about ourselves. I don't have this. My friend has this. I wish I had that. Uh, it's horrible. We're thinking about ourselves all the time. We're Christians. We ought not be thinking about ourselves all the time. We ought to be out serving others. And it's not just young people. It's old people too. We go in to worship God and we have our pews that we sit in and someone sits in our pew and we get mad that they're sitting in our pew. It's like we paid money for this 18 inches of this pew. Why are you sitting there? And not only do we pay money, we pay extra money because we want to sit on the end of the pew. So everyone has to climb over us to get in that are visiting. And that's how we think about ourselves all the time. What type of songs do I like to sing at church? They sing Amazing Grace every Sunday at Old Rugged Cross. And can't we sing something else besides those songs? It's always about us. It's always about what I want. It's about I want to feel good. We're not serving other people anymore. We're looking just at ourselves. And young people, let me tell you, if this is going to change in the church, it has to change with you. You have to be the ones who set that example. You have to be the ones who's going to say, I want to go on a mission trip. I want to serve others. I want to go where folks don't have anything. And I want to take what I have and help them out. Maybe it's too late for my generation to do more than that. But it's not for you. Do you need to be out there serving other people, caring about other people? And most of all, you ought to be caring about other people's eternity. You need to be sharing the greatest thing that you can share with other people. And that's the message of Jesus Christ. If you have to do without so that others can have, you ought to do that. But we, we complain about ourselves. You know, I don't have this. I don't have that. I want this. I want that. There's a lady I told our church about. Her name was Pearl Rusey. She was in a nursing home. She was blind. She, her arthritis was really, really, really bad. Uh, this is up in Clearfield, in, in Currensville, a little town up there. That's where she was. And, and, and Pearl was, oh, I just love Pearl. You go in to visit her, you knock on the door, and, and uh, she'd say, she could tell who you were just by your knock. So I, I'd go in, i go, Pearl, she goes, John, is that you? And this little old lady, she's blind as a bat. I mean, she's completely blind. She has arthritis. She has pain so bad. You know what they do to help relieve pain when you have arthritis that bad? They take wax and they heat it up until it's melted. It's a liquid. Can you imagine how hot that is? And they say, we're going to make you feel better. Give me your hand. And they put it down in that wax that's melted. It's that hot. They put it down in there and that relieves her pain. I don't know how it does it, but they would do, they would do that while I was there. And, and this, this precious, this precious pearl, she said, John, is that you? I said, yeah, pearl. She goes, oh, come in and sit down. She said, I think over on my windowsill, there's a, a bowl full of candy. She said, I don't know if there's any more in it. I had some in it, but people keep coming in and taking it. And I said, are you getting my candy? Who are you? And they won't answer me. And they know I can't tell who it is. They just come in. You hear them take it. You, I hope there's something in there. And you, you look and there might be what piece. I said, there's one more piece, Pearl. I said, I'll leave that. Here. Oh, no, John, you take that. I want you to have that. And I'd be there for 25, 30 minutes. And do you know who we talked about for 25, 30 minutes? Everybody in the church except for Pearl. She said, how is so-and-so doing? How is so-and-so doing? How's Pam doing? How's your kids doing? How's it 
She wouldn't even want to talk about herself. And, and she'd say, John, what time is it? And I, I'd tell her, and, and she'd say, uh, I used to have a clock over there. Someone got her clock, precious people. And, and instead of having a face to it, it, it would just say, it is three o'clock. Because she could hear. She, she's just blind. She could still hear. It, it's three o'clock, and she'd know what time it was. And it's 3.15. It's 3.30. So she could, someone took it. They took it. They just made it. Took it. She couldn't tell who it was. She's gone. They, they, they stole everything she had. And I'd say, oh, girl, I'm so sorry. And she goes, oh, they might need it worse than I do. And then she'd smile. She goes, of course, I doubt they're blind or they wouldn't have been able to see the clock. I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but she's always thinking about others. Always wanting to know what she could do. She had no money. And yet, if she would have had $5, she would have given it to me to give to somebody. That's who Pearl was. Do you know why Pearl was like that? I, I, I'm convinced I do. She was like that because she knew and loved her God. So let me ask you a question. If you're always thinking about yourself, you're not thinking about others. How well do we really know God and love Him? Because I think if we did, it would change the way we think. Now, now go back to John 12 real quick. Yeah, I, I want us to look at Mary. Uh, she, she, she has this perfume and she takes this perfume and, and it's real expensive. She could have sold it and, and bought a house, but she didn't. She took her perfume and when she took it, uh, she went and she said she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Who has really long hair in here? One of you ladies. Can you stand up just a minute? She had pretty hair. Yeah, and Jesus. Okay, that, that pretty hair. Now, do you love to get your hair all dirty? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, well, here, here is Mary. She has this, and, and, and back then, the roads weren't like they were are now. So, when your feet, your feet were dirty. And it's messed up and dirty. She takes this, anoints his feet, and takes her hair and wipes his feet. She's not thinking about herself at all. She's thinking about her Savior. And she does this, not even thinking about herself. She loves her God. She loves her God. And I don't know how much she understood about him dying. He knew. I don't know how much she understood. I know this. She loved him with everything that she had. Let's remember this. We talk about how great God is. God is holy. He's just. He's loving. He, he is a, a great God. Now that being like that, we need to understand that you have a God who is all powerful. He spoke the world into creation. He's loving and he's gracious. That God deserves everything that, that Mary could do. He deserved that. He deserved to have that perfume on him. And, and, and Judas sees it. Why well, could I help the poor? We could have sold it to help the poor. Judas wasn't thinking of Jesus at all. I, I, we need to start in our lives every morning when you get up. Every morning when you get up. What you ought to do is say, Lord, thank you for this day. You ought to do that. Start off your day thanking God for being God. And then, how many of you when you pray, are your prayers asking for things? Liars. Y'all are liars. I asked God for all the... Lord, please be my dad right now. He's going to do a tough time. Lord, be with this. Lord, be with that. How much of our prayers are just telling Jesus 
how great he is. How great he is. We ought to be doing that. My, my wife was in, was in a store and she was going to buy a dress. And, and I said, I want you to get a dress. And she said, okay. And, and she comes out and she uh, I tries it on. She goes in the little thing and, and she comes out. And, and here's, here's how she does. She puts it on. She comes out of the dressing room. She looks like this to see if anyone's watching. And then she'll step out. She says, how do I look? And, and I remember this one time we was at uh, Penny's or something. And, and she said, how do I look at this? Oh, babe, you look so beautiful. She was John Quick, counting the truth. <laughs> babe, you look hot. That is a good look for you. She was John Quick, just tell me how I look. I said, mm-hmm, babe, you're looking good. She was, would you just quit and tell me how I look? And I said, excuse me, ma'am. I said, could you tell my wife how she looks? And ma'am knew there wasn't anybody there, but there was. <laughs> it was an older lady, and she goes, Oh, darling, you just look beautiful. Pam goes all red. It was real well, out with the dress, a red face, a nice dress. And, and, and she goes, oh, thank you so much. She goes back in the dressing room, bam, shuts that door. Comes back out, you're going to get you. No, I'm not going to get that dress. <laughs> Babe, you need to get that dress. You look incredible in it. And I tell her that. You know why I told her that? Like, she looked incredible in it. I wanted her to get it. So we tell our friends those things, but when it comes to God who created the world, we don't even tell him how great he is. We do sing about it, and that's a good thing. I love you guys picking out those songs. It's a wonderful song you picked out. We ought to be singing praises to God, telling him how great he is. We ought to be telling him how great he is in our prayers. We ought to be thanking him for all that he does. We ought to be on our knees. God deserves all of that. He deserves that. Do the poor deserve that? I'm going to get myself in trouble here. Do the poor deserve that they took that, that perfume and sold it to give to the poor? Did they deserve that? Here's the answer. No. You don't deserve it either. You see, at our best, we are sinners. That's what we are. What we deserve is hell because we have sinned. That's what we deserve. We, we got this big idea of ourselves about how much we deserve. We don't deserve anything. God deserves all of our praise. Now, should we care about the poor? Yes. Why should we care about the poor? Because God loves us. He loves us whether we're rich or whether we're poor, whether we have everything, whether we have nothing. The one thing about people who sometimes have nothing is they know they have nothing. And they know that if anything is going to happen to them in their lives, it's because God. If you have something, you start thinking, you got that for yourself. Yeah, I watched years ago a hurricane went over Haiti, just destroyed everything. Houses in Haiti aren't like our houses. They're they're just like straw houses, many of them, and and and, and just just destroyed everything. And the hurricane, everything was gone. The people had to go like hiking 20 miles to the place where they could get food and water. So it has them on TV and it shows them. And they're in a long line and they have their pots and baskets on their head. And here they go. They're walking over to get their stuff. And do you know what they're doing as they're walking over to the place to get food and water? They're singing praises to God. How that ever got on the news, I don't know. But they were singing praises to God after they lost everything. And what they had was very little compared to us. But they lost everything. They had nothing. They were fortunate if they had a jar that they could put on their head and carry over for water and food. They had nothing and they were praising God. I love y'all, but we have so much and we whine because we don't have more. That's not right. We ought to be saying, oh God, thank you for being my God and if you're all I have, then I am rich beyond description. We need to start be, becoming God-centered in our thinking. God sent his son down to die for us. 
And James, James tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from where? Above. A God. Everything that we have that is good, it comes from God. And the writer of Hebrews tells us that, that Jesus will, will never, never, never forsake us. That he is our helper. He says, what, what should you fear? What can man do to you if you have God in your life? Now, brethren, I, I just, I just want to challenge you with this. Our worship has to be centered on God Almighty. And here's, here's some things I just... We, uh, when we come to worship, who, who do we worship when we're at worship? Who, who do we worship? God. When we sing songs and praise, we sing them to God, right? It, it should be what God likes. How many of you like broccoli? What did your parents do to you that made you like broccoli? Did they make you eat that as a kid? That is abuse. Oh, and you ate it. You ate it. Oh, that is horrible. Uh, here's the bad thing about people who like broccoli. They think everyone ought to like broccoli. <laughs> you take broccoli and you give it to a kid, a wee little kid like my, my grandson, he's almost two. His mama, we were out at an olive garden and she got something with broccoli, I mean intentional, on the plate. And, and so she gets in, she goes, here Hudson, have this. I said, you're not going to get that to him, are you? She goes, Poppy, that's what they call me. Poppy, yeah. He's going to like that. I said, he's not going to like that. He <laughs> might if you stop talking like that. <laughs> and she gives it to him. And he takes it. And see, that's the natural reaction to broccoli. <laughs> Every kid who doesn't know anything knows broccoli is horrible. You have to be trained to think that broccoli is tolerable. And, and you have some brain damage if you think it's good. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you do. And so here you have the broccoli and you think, I like broccoli because you've been brainwashed to like broccoli. And then you think other people ought to like broccoli too. And you think, you want some broccoli? And I said, no, I have nothing wrong with my brain. And you think, oh, come on, you'll like it. No, I, I won't. Yeah, no, just try it. That's what you ladies do. Oh, just try it. And then you get that cute smile. Try it for me. <laughs> and we're so stupid. Okay. <laughs> and we put it in our mouth. And then we spit it out. And you yell at us for being crude. I don't understand that either. But there it is. And, and so, so here's what it is. We think, I like broccoli. Everyone ought to like broccoli. In our worship, here's what we think. I like this, so everybody else ought to like this. What's your favorite song? What's your favorite song to sing in church? Like the fire? That's nice, isn't it? Yes. What's your favorite song? What is it? Ah, oh, nice. Ah. You like those type of songs? What song do you think God likes? You know, I've really never thought. What would God's favorite song be? What be it? All Fly Away. Amazing Grace. Uh, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. How great thou art. It, here's the thing. We worship God, but we don't think too much what God wants in our worship. We, we, we think about what we want in our worship. I like this. God has to like this. I like broccoli. God doesn't like broccoli, I can say. I mean, he hasn't told me. He hasn't told me. What's that? He created it? 
Yes, he did. <laughs> Maybe he would like to create something that would tell other people, this is how bad life could be. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't there. I might look like I was there, but I wasn't. And maybe it's possible, thank you, it's possible, I mean, because I know where I'm at, it's possible God could have created Brock and said, oh, this is a good thing, but it doesn't tell us that in the Bible anywhere, specifically about Brock. It just doesn't. So, so what happens if God created Brock and said, this too is good. Then, is broccoli good? Yes, it is. <laughs> but I'm not God. <laughs> so God be patient with me. I'm having trouble with this broccoli thing. There's some cheese on it. Uh, <laughs> might as well have Brussels sprouts or asparagus. Those asparagus things, those are dangerous. Those are fierce. Asparagus. <laughs> And let me tell you, just, and then we'll get back. Anything that you have to put that much garbage on to make it edible tells you it's not that good to begin with. So, so here we go. When our worship comes, what we do is we worship God the way that we want to worship God. And we tell God that has to be what you're satisfied with. But sometimes it might not be. So we're going to be talking later about our worship in what God wants. I need you to look uh, 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 one, one more place for me real quick. If you have your Bibles, open them up to the book of Colossians. Colossians. In Colossians, turn to chapter 3. <coughs> look beginning in verse 1. Paul is writing, he says this. If then... You were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Let me ask you this question. If we are raised with Christ, we're supposed to seek those things which are above. What are those things? What are we talking about if we're seeking those things which are above? If we're seeking things of the earth, what would that be? Broccoli. <laughs> well, broccoli's on earth, isn't it? Yeah, broccoli. What are other things that we seek on earth? Cars, Xboxes. New smartphones. What other things? Clothes? Houses? Boats? Ski machines? Teddy bears? What are the things above? What is it talking about when he says seek things above? Seek things in heaven maybe? Okay, seek things in heaven. Look for the spiritual things. What else? I thought you guys were a much quicker crowd than you are. It is early. Yeah. And I've been going on and on. How about this? How about seeking the ability to love one another? Is that from above? God is that. How about this? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Do you have trouble forgiving other people when they've done stuff? Do you have trouble with that? Do you want God to forgive you? Should we not forgive others? Should that not be something that we get? Focus our eyes. Lord, you have forgiven me for so much. Here's something. How about grace? What is grace? We talk about grace. What is grace? If uh, God gives us grace, what are we talking about that He gives us? If He gives us grace. 
What's that? Forgiveness. Forgiveness? That, that is what I think that has to be part of grace, doesn't it? What's that? Favor. Yeah, it, it, he sheds his favor on us. Do we do we deserve it? No. Have we earned it? No. No, but he gives it to us anyway. He, he, he has so much grace. And he, you sinned. You beat Brock. I'm not saying that's a sin. I'm just saying you did both of those things. Okay. You've sinned. You've eaten broccoli. You've done things in your life that's not good. And, and he's, he's, well, you haven't had it yet? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to agree twice. I mean, don't be proud of doing things that's not good. No, you haven't. You have. Yes, you have. I have to. And I'm, I'm a horrible. Uh, but God loves me anyway. He knows what we think. He knows what we've done. He knows how we treat other people. And, and He knows that we are deserving of hell. Everyone knows we're deserving of hell except us. We think we're so great. We don't deserve it. But we do because we sin. Our sin separates us from God. God's in heaven. We came to be in heaven. When we have sin, we have to have our sin taken care of. God loves us so much. He says, I'll send my son down to die for you. That is grace. We ought to be thinking about grace when somebody cuts you off on the highway and your immediate reaction is to give them a piece of your mind. Maybe what we ought to do is say, I need to give them some grace. There's a wonderful, beautiful young lady uh, 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 Washington. Uh, uh, I've seen her out driving. She has a big, great big car and she's just a wee little girl so she has to sit on cushions. So she can see over and it's great. The dashboard and stuff. And I saw her and I'm oh, there she is. And so I go to pull up. We're going around the bend. I go to pull up real quick around her so I can wave to her. And so I'm pulling up and she speeds up. And so I go a little bit faster to kind of get around there to, to say hi. And, and there she is. And I'm going around and I roll my, have my window down and I go to wave at her. And she turns around. She's someone from church and she gives me the finger. <laughs> Whoa. Yes. That was a surprise to me. There she is, this little girl on these cushions, sticking up in this big car, and that's what she's waving at me out the window. And here's the bad thing. As soon as she does it, she looks over. She sees it's her preacher. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I've never seen anyone move so fast taking that arm down in that I go over, I knock on the door, her mama enters, and she said, I'm not going to tell you her name. I will call her Mary. <laughs> she said, Mary is so embarrassed. That's the first thing she says to me. I knock on the door, and the door goes, hi, Mary is so embarrassed. <laughs> and I said, she is? Why is she embarrassed? And she, she told me what happened. And I said, what do you, is, is, is Mary here? <laughs> She's up in her room. And I said, yes. I said, can I come you? She knows you're here. And I said, I can't wait to see her. <laughs> and her mom goes, are you mad at her? And I said, no, I'm not mad at her. And what happened earlier, there were some boys following her in their car. And she thought, well, I am a boy. But she, she thought it was one of them. Right, and right. so that's what it was all about. And, and, and so her mom goes, Mary? And you come down, the preacher wants to see you. <laughs> and she comes down, she's like this when she comes up. John, I'm so sorry. And she's starting to cry. <laughs> you ought to be. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't. Mary, you. I didn't know it was you. <laughs> I'm thankful for that. <laughs> And if I knew it was you, I wouldn't have done that. And I said, well, it's surprising me, Mary, that you wouldn't do that to anybody. And then she tells me the story about these guys that was kind of just chasing her through town. And, and, and I said, I can understand how you would be uh, upset. But you know what? Even in a case like that, 
You think I ought to show her some grace? Yeah. I've done dumb things in my life all the time. And you have to seek those things above. Love, humility, grace, forgiveness. So here's what you're going to do the rest of the week or the rest of the day you're out here. Outstanding. The rest of the week you're out here. Someone does something that just annoys you a little bit, like Calvin's broccoli jokes. <laughs> and they do that, you just say, ah, uh, that did that preacher. We need to show him a little grace. Right? Someone treats you bad, show them a little grace. Someone does something that hurts your feelings, forgive them. Think about God. Don't think about yourself. Think about others, but more than anything, think about God. Not just today, but every day. Keep Him close to your heart. And when you pray, tell God how great He is. One last thing. How many of you ladies here like to be told that you're pretty? Be honest. Someone tells you you're pretty, you get mad. <laughs> hey, you look very pretty. Drop that! <laughs> If they're sincere, I mean, you don't want someone just do it, but if they're sincere, does that make you feel good? <laughs> Pam has this thing. She tells me how strong I am. And she'll have a bottle pop and she'll say, oh, can you open this? I can't get it open. So she gives me the bottle. I click. <laughs> You're so strong. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Some of those bottles are pretty tight, baby, but I can get it for you. And I'll just do that. And, and, and then sometimes I'll go, with my kids, I'll go, click. And then I'll go, oh, I can't get it. Why don't you do it? Show them a little grace. Then they go, oh, I opened it up, Bobby. You couldn't open it. I know you're so strong. <laughs> God isn't us. But we ought to be telling God that He is God. If for no other reason remind us of who we are and who God is. So, young men, let me tell you, if I need my bottle pop open, I feel confident that I could come to any one of you and you'd be able to open it up for me. Yep. Yep. And, and, and I'll tell you how strong you are. And if you want me to, I'll tell you how pretty you are. <laughs> I mean, you're looking good, Evan. You're looking good. Uh, things are looking good there in you. But you, make sure you are letting other folks know that they're good folks. And you make sure you're serving others. But before that, even, you make sure that you remember how great God is. This afternoon, I want to talk about worship. I'm going to challenge you in that. I appreciate you so much. You guys are incredible. You just, you are incredible, even though some of you do eat broccoli that'll probably change now that you know the real story behind that but thank you for putting up with me i appreciate it